Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and I'm back today for another macro photography tutorial. Today we're doing oil on water, which is a really popular macro photography subject. It's really easy and fun for you guys to do at home. Uh, so let's get started. So oil on water, probably one of the most prolific uh, macro photography subjects that I see uh, people trying out when they first get their macro lenses, simply because it's so easy to set up and do at home and get some really cool, interesting and varied results, um, all from the comfort of your coffee table. Um, but what do you need to actually do this? Uh, so let's take a look. We've got uh, we've got some oil, obviously. Um, I've got sunflower oil, but any cooking oil would uh, would work just the same. So uh, vegetable oil or olive oil, uh, they'll all create that film, that layer of oil on top of the water. Um, water, we're going to need some water. Uh, I've just got a little measuring jug here, but that's not what we're going to be shooting in. You're going to need some sort of glassware that's got a, a large flat surface area on the bottom that we're going to shoot against. So I've got a, a Pyrex uh, uh, baking tray there um, and we're going to set that up on this glass coffee table um, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. We're also going to need some lighting and some colour because that's where the, the real striking images come from is the colour of, uh, of the background. Um, so I've got the Adapter Look Studio here, I've got a few white lighting arms and I've got all of our colour filters here because we're going to be experimenting with those. Uh, you're also going to need um, some kitchen towels just to clear up the mess and we've got another use for those as well but I'll show you that in a second. And obviously we're going to need a camera and a tripod. Uh, I'm going to set up that camera and tripod now and show you how this whole thing comes together. I've already managed to spill some water, but we've got our uh, camera set up here um, the way that we want it. Um, the aim of the game is to be shooting directly downwards onto your glassware, uh, where your water is going to be. Um, and you're going to need some space underneath that as well, because we're going to be putting some colours and some lights under there. Um, I'm very lucky in that I've got a, a glass coffee table here which allows me to shoot down through our glassware and then also down through the top of the glass under here so I can put things under here and it's going to work really well. Next we're going to be adding the oil and water to our glassware and uh, we can see what that's going to look like through our camera. Now we need to add our water first because if you add the, the oil first um, the act of the water going in there is going to make the bubbles really really small. Uh, so I'm just going to add some water here and there's no real limit to how much water you need to use. Uh, it's the oil that is going to um, make the difference here. So that's probably enough water in there. Um, for the oil though, I'm going to start with just uh, maybe a tablespoon's worth of oil in here. If you use too much, uh, you can't get it out again obviously. Um, and if you use too little, uh, you won't get the bubbles that you're looking for. Um, but you can always add more and you can't take it out again. So now that we've got some oil in there, I'm just going to very gently stir this and see what kind of bubbles we're, we're getting forming on the top of here and whether or not we've got enough oil. Um, I'm liking the look of this so far, so I'm going to pop this under the camera and see what we can see. So I've popped our mixture underneath the camera here and you can see that there's, there's not a huge amount to see right now. Um, what we need to do is make sure that our glassware is centralised uh, in the frame because there's a big Pyrex logo on the bottom with, some, uh, with the remnants of a label and there's also the edges of the, the tray. So I'm going to make sure that I'm shooting through this little area just here. And that means that we're not going to see any evidence of the uh, the tray or the, the glass underneath here. Our next step is going to be to add some colour and some lighting. So what goes underneath our, our mixture? Uh, well, I've got the Adapter Look Studio here and I've got three lighting arm S's which are our slightly brighter version of the normal white lighting arms. Um, I'm going to plug all three of these lighting arms in. And I'm going to position them so that they're all quite close together. Um, and then 
are going to pop on some color filters. So I've got a green color filter on this arm, I'm going to pop a blue one on as well, and I'm going to try red on the outset as well. Now, you'll probably already notice that that makes a huge amount of difference to our shot. Uh, you can see all three of these colors quite clearly down through the, the solution. Um, they're a little bit too clear for my liking, actually. Um, so this is where I mentioned that we're going to be using our uh, kitchen roll for another purpose. And we're going to use that for diffusion. So I'm just going to pop that straight over the top of our colors. And that's going to create a nice even layer of, uh, of color for our diffused material. Then looking through our camera, you can see that you've got a really nice uh, even spread of the three colors across the background of our solution. Um, focusing, you want to be focused on the bubbles themselves, not on this background. If you focused on the background, the bubbles would just serve to create some sort of distortion in there and you wouldn't be able to see them. So let's take a really quick look at our camera settings. Um, I'm shooting at 1 320th of a second, which is really good for when you're taking um, stills and that means that you can freeze the motion of the bubbles as they move around. Um, my ISO is at 200 and my aperture is set manually via, via the lens at uh, f2.5. Uh, that's really quite wide and there's a reason for it being that wide. Uh, it's to make the depth of field as shallow as possible. We really only want to be focused on the bubbles themselves and everything behind that needs to be out of focus. So a really um, wide aperture is, is great for, for achieving that. Um, speaking of focus, there's a really great tip for if you're using a live view camera like this um, and focusing manually. You can select uh, an area on your image and use the zoom functions on the back of your camera to zoom in and choose your focus very, very precisely. So getting in this close, it makes it very, very easy to focus manually and accurately. I'm going to very quickly turn out the studio lights and see exactly what we've got here because these lights up here are going to be um, affecting, they're going to be falling on these bubbles and affecting the way that they look. So I'll turn those off really quickly and see what it looks like. This is looking pretty good to me, but something that's happened since we've uh, poured our oil and water is that the, the oil has congealed back into larger bubbles. So all you need to do to fix that is just give it a little bit of a mix. And this in itself is really, really interesting because it creates all sorts of crazy swirls and shapes um, that then move around. And it's very, very interesting to do some uh, videography on, on this, um, which is what we'll be doing throughout uh, this entire process is filming as we mix. And it's gonna create some really interesting shapes as the bubbles move around and interact with the light on the background. Now, speaking of the light in the background, this is where you're going to want to adjust a little bit. Um, as you move those lights around, you're going to change the balance of the colours that are falling onto the bubbles. So just a quick movement there means that I've got now red on the left and then green and then into blue as those bubbles move across, which I think is really quite cool. So that's pretty much everything that you need to consider when you're setting up a shot like this. Other than obvious stuff like the glass being as clean as possible. Um, now my, my bowl's actually got, um, it's got a few scratches and things on it, so it, it's not perfect and my images aren't going to be perfect. But if you want yours to be as pristine as possible, uh, make sure that you're shooting through some glass or uh, plastic that just doesn't have any scratches or imperfections. Um, now there's other ways to do this as well. Uh, you don't need to be uh, lighting things from underneath using the Adapter Look Studio. Uh, you can be lighting, um, say, a colourful object underneath it, uh, and that object would then shine through, and you'd be able to see that through. A lot of people like to use iPads and tablets for stuff like this as well, because you can put an image on your tablet, and it will shine up through your oil with the same sort of effect. Um, Again, you don't need to be using a coffee table either. You can stack up a bowl or a piece of glass on, say, some some books and raise that up off the off the floor so that you can then fit things underneath it. That's a really great way of setting this uh, this up. Um, 
what I'm going for is to be getting some great varied images using different colors. So I'm going to be using all of our color filters and changing them out on our white lighting arms so that we get a big variation between uh, the different colors in the background. I'm going to start doing that now and just go mad and see how many different styles I can get out of a simple setup like this. I've had so much fun doing this. There's so many different combinations of lights and colours and the way that the bubbles interact on the surface of the water. Every time you stir them that's completely unique. Um, so I, yeah, there's loads and loads to do with this. Um, and I know that some of you guys at home have already done this. This is one of the most common macro photography subjects to try out when you first get your uh, <laughs> new macro lens. So yeah, I really want to know exactly how you guys would do this, especially if you do it differently to the way that I've done it. Um, leave a comment below uh, describing your setup um, and what you would do differently. If you like the way that we've done it though, make sure to give us a like uh, down underneath the video. And while you're there, you can subscribe if you like uh, these videos that we're making, the, the tutorials, ideas and inspiration for uh, macro subjects that you guys can do easily at home. Uh, just next to the subscribe button there is a bell button and that will notify you every time that we upload a new video and you can take that as a new challenge for something to do at home with your macro lens. Um, until that notification comes through though guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.